This release of Sky Tools includes a new Sky Tools Visual 4.1 feature, which is available to those who have Sky Tools Visual version 4.1, and many fixes and minor feature updates for all Sky Tools versions. See the update webpage for more information on these. We have improved the Sky Tools model calculations of brightness, visibility, and SNR for Comet Suchinshan Atlas by including the surge due to forward scattering, which will improve its predictions in October. Greg reports that the much-anticipated support for EAA is coming along, despite some interesting challenges, and he intends to preview it at the El Dorado Star Party on October 31st. The main focus of this video will be the new control for selecting transparency that is introduced in Sky Tools Visual Version 4.1. We are introducing a new way to control the transparency directly, and we think you are going to like it. Let's hear from Greg about how this all came about. Last summer, I was thinking about starting a new YouTube channel, and I did some experimenting with different ideas. One of the channels I tried was about visual observing, and it was called Getting Out There. For the first video, I decided I was going to go out to a local football field with my 8-inch outreach telescope. The clear sky chart said the night was going to be so-so, but because there was a huge outburst reported for Comet 12P Ponds Brooks, I wanted to witness it. So I headed out anyhow. To tell the truth, I'm pretty spoiled. I tend to go out to observe only on those really amazing nights. And living on a 9,000-foot mountain in the desert means I get quite a few of those. So it was unusual for me to be going out there if it wasn't going to be one of these fantastic nights. And it turned out it was actually a terrible night. As the sky grew dark, there were clouds. And after it got dark, there were stars missing. We've all seen that. But there were some clearer areas, especially toward the north where I needed it for the comet and it appeared to get a little better as the night went on. But at first I couldn't understand what I was seeing. The sky was a sort of gray, even though there was little light pollution. There were far fewer stars than normal. The Milky Way didn't stand out at all. And I was a little confused. I had been out on a clear night with binoculars a few days before. The difference was confounding. Now, as nights go, this isn't anywhere near as good as the other night. I'm looking at the Milky Way. I was out here just two nights ago with a pair of binoculars. And man, the Milky Way was just exploding out of the sky. Right now, it sort of looks like, well, it, to tell you the truth, it's hard to see. Which is not something I'm used to up here. The whole sky is bright. And I'm not entirely sure... Why? After that night, I decided to review what I knew about the factors that go into what makes a nice looking sky. And it was then that I realized there was an opportunity to improve sky tools. The way sky tools has handled transparency in the past is that you put in weather conditions, the temperature and the humidity on the ground. It uses these as proxies to determine the atmospheric extinction which turns out to also be what we call transparency. So under the right conditions, generally cool and dry, you're going to have a much higher chance of high transparency. And if you put those temperature and humidity conditions in sky tools at high altitude, it's going to calculate a highly transparent sky. But all of this is hidden from the user. It's buried. Sometimes that's a good thing because it means the user doesn't have to think about it. But in this case, I think it was a terrible idea because, well, I think a lot of the time people weren't even aware of the effect of the temperature and humidity, and they probably weren't always taking the time to set them accurately. Not only that, but it's only a proxy for transparency. It's going to be approximate at best, and ground conditions aren't even that good of a proxy. So it dawned on me, why not just replace the temperature and humidity with a simple transparency selection? On an absolutely perfect night in the desert, on top of a mountain, we can set it for prime transparency. Or if we think it's going to be awful, like the night I saw that started all this, we can set it for awful transparency. It was shocking to me the first time I tried this in Sky Tools. I added the new transparency selection to an overhead sky chart and set it for my home location. 
it came up at prime transparency. And oh boy, there was this fantastic Milky Way crossing the sky, going all the way to the horizon. There were lots of stars, and they went all the way to the horizon too. You know, like I'm used to seeing. Isn't that great? People say to me, Greg, I don't live on a mountain in the desert. Sky tools isn't going to work for me. But hold on. Then I switched the transparency to awful. And it was exactly what I'd seen on that night when I couldn't understand why the sky looked so bad. Now I understood intuitively that it was transparency that was the problem. I had suspected that before, but now I knew. At a high elevation with little light pollution, I can get a sky that looks like this. But on a bad night, it will look like this. Either way, sky tools can accurately represent what we are seeing. So I think this was a very good choice. I think that you're going to get used to it pretty quickly, and it's going to be something that will help you understand what the limits are for your location. So let's look at the transparency selections we have. Greg chose a five-point scale, because a seven-point scale would be putting too fine a point on it, and a three-point scale wouldn't be putting a fine enough point on it. With the five-point scale, there's a midpoint, so there's a spot in between the best transparency and the worst transparency, and we're going to call that typical. For the best transparency, Greg thought about this a lot and conferred with other observers, and he concluded that prime was the best way to describe the best transparency. A prime night is not just a night of really good transparency. It is special in some way. These nights are rare, and not every location is capable of them. Greg settled on awful for the opposite extreme, because it really is awful. If you select that, it's probably a night you shouldn't be observing on, at least according to Greg, who already admitted how spoiled he is. So what about what's between typical and prime? He decided to call that good. If you are someplace near sea level, especially with a lot of atmospheric moisture overhead, good is probably the best transparency you're ever going to get at that location. Between awful and typical, he chose poor. Greg says that would be the worst night that he would want to actually be observing on, unless he had a really compelling reason to observe, like an event in the sky or a comet that's not going to be there the next night, that sort of thing. So our final scale goes from prime, the very best, to good, to typical, to poor, and finally, awful. We purposely chose a scale that closely follows what is forecast on the clear sky charts, which are available for North America. Although we use different labels for the scale, the colors that represent them are the same, so we can glance at the forecast on the chart and simply match the color in the transparency selection. There is just one more thing to be aware of. Some calculations are made for the distant future, or generic circumstances, and we can't know what the transparency is going to be. So for these predictions, Sky Tools will use the typical values of transparency and seeing from this dialog that you set for each location. This replaces the old settings for monthly temperatures and humidity values. Instead, set the transparency to what you expect on a usual night for you. If you are picky like Greg, set that to good. If you have to settle for a pretty bad sky most of the time, set it to poor. Otherwise, just set it to typical. If you don't see a selection for the transparency in a tool, that means it will use the value set here. We hope you like this improvement as much as we do. Clear skies and happy observing. <laughs>